distortion and saturation, at least consider it on every single element in your song. Hey guys, it's Sunday. Sunday in the studio is usually a day where I just take my time to explore new plugins, learn something new, just like take a chill approach to music making, but still like advancing. And a couple of days ago, I made a video about distortion, just showcasing that it's really important, but not really explaining a whole lot. And people were asking what's the difference between distortion, saturation, how to use it, how to actually use it to improve the sound of your synthesizers, of your drums, improve the overall sound of your production. Because I think like what sets a pro production apart from an amateur production is definitely the right usage of saturation and distortion. It's like one of the blocks, like reverb is really important, the cueing is really important, compression. But I'd actually say distortion, at least for me and my type of music, is more important than, than compression actually. And to showcase all of it, I will actually use like the, the least expensive plugin I can find that is still really good so everyone can like mimic what I'm doing and, and use the same sounds. Um, it's called Satyrus by WA Productions. I think it's just like, it's less than 10 bucks right now. It's like on sale. So if you're interested, check it out down below in the description. But first let's talk about like saturation and distortion. Cause like technically speaking, they're very close and very similar. For most people, saturation is just like the less audible version of distortion but it's more like a historic difference between those two. For example, saturation is more like tape saturation or saturating through tubes. So it's more coloring and usually taking a little away of the top end. Distortion on the other hand is like way more crunchy clip distortion, like chopping things off. It sometimes adds top end and, and makes it crunchy and audible. So those are like the general differences, but they're really close together. And a lot of producers use both words in the same kind of context. A guitar, for example, if you hear the distortion, it's distorted. If it's more the original guitar sound, plus a lot of warmth, it's usually more saturation. But I'm sure every producer has a slight different definition of these two and the difference. Let me know in the comments if you agree or totally disagree. But now let's get to the most important, what it actually sounds like. Because no matter what, what you name it, like what the name of it is, it's, it's important to listen for what it's doing and, and knowing how it's going to sound like and what it does to your sound. So I got here a very standard synthesizer sound, an arpeggiator. Um, like MIDI sent to the Super Jupiter. Sounds already quite good. And I like to keep it right here, the cutoff, like in, in the middle position. So you can hear the sound, but you still have room to automate it later in the song. That's something I will have to record. But I already opened the Satyrus, the distortion saturation plugin. That is very simple. Like um, there is not really a point of me trying to explain you what which knob does. It's very straightforward. You got some algorithms. You can switch it to mono stereo and you have an in and out and it showcases to you what is actually happening to the sound. Let's just run through some of these sounds to get a feel for it.
example, this preset right here is a good example for something that is more saturation, it's more coloration. It doesn't do that much, it gives it warmth and like I, I try to compare saturation always to like um, like sanding wood with a very fine grain. So it gets rough, but it's rough in a so fine way that it's actually smooth again. I hope this, this kind of makes sense, but that's basically how you get wood smooth. You make it rough, but really, really fine. So um, yeah, you can actually, even if I turn it up to 70% on the in and out, you still, uh, it's like still way less than like proper distortion. That's a good example for something that is really crunchy, that is more distortion. You can also see it like in, in the waveform that is displayed there, that it just looks way more fuzzy. That one is also quite extreme and heavy. And I personally, when I when I use distortion and saturation on, on my lead synthesizer sounds, I like actually to pick something that is quite extreme and then mix it in just a tiny bit. So right here, just like 4% and you can still really hear it. it. It's maybe still a little too extreme, but then again, if you listen to the entire mix, that crunchiness and fuzziness can help to make your synthesizer lead sound stand out a little more. And it's way more interesting. If you, if you take it away, it's a very boring sound. More aggressive, more attack, it cuts more through the mix, and it really helps the sound. And then of course you can still like open the cutoff and, and make it, like it, it's even emphasized more. And then the rest is just like delay, reverb, and that kind of stuff. So I personally would try and use distortion and saturation, at least consider it on every single element in your song. The same works for drums. There, I would actually try to make sure to exclude, for example, the low end, to not mess the kick up too much, because that's usually not sounding or doesn't, it's not really considered clean again if your kick is too distorted, too saturated, but a little also helps there. Lead sounds, definitely. Bass sounds, definitely. Like everything, a little roughness, a little edge, so that it doesn't sound that overly plasticky clean. That's usually something that back in the days happened by mistake or was just in there because it wasn't possible otherwise. Nowadays with DAWs and plugins, everything is so clean. So like there's no grip, no tension, no nothing that you actually need to saturate and distort everything a lot. A lot of people put vinyl cracks in there. A lot of people put noise in there, field recordings, that kind of stuff to just give it like that organic hint that makes the music more human in a way. I hope this helped. If you're interested in that plugin, go check it out. It's really the, the least expensive one that I think is good. Good to be used on your music. It's also something I use on my synthesizer sounds. And always think about like doing the, the parallel distortion and saturation. Like have something heavy in there, mix it in a tiny bit. At least for me, it gives me way quicker results, way more control. And yeah, I couldn't live without it. Like I would probably rather exclude compression from my production than saturation and distortion. Anyways, thanks all for watching. Tomorrow, Monday, full music production day back here in the studio. Today, exploring more plugins and also playing around with my new synthesizer. <sighs> Just so much fun.